Hello and welcome to the following on podcast, uh, either via the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel or via your podcast feed. I'm John Norman, alongside me, Steve mm-hmm. Harmison, um, a man who's played a famous game or two here at Edgbaston. And uh, we might have a famous game here, Harmy. 13 wickets falling in the day. West Indies bowled out for 282 after deciding to bat first on what looked like a blameless pitch. They were at one stage 115 for five. And then in the last 45 minutes of uh, of play, England losing Crawley and Duckett uh, shortly after I'd wax lyrical to you off air about how much I enjoyed watching these two batters. Uh, they both departed inside two balls and Mark Wood was brilliantly caught by Jason Holder. Um, so, yeah, game on here at Edgbaston. First off, though, um, well, let's talk about this, the, the state of the game because, you know, with Pope and Root at the crease, you know, a couple of early ones. In that first session tomorrow, you know, England give up uh, a first innings lead on a pitch which is showing signs of variable bounce. Never know, West Indies might fancy this. I'm sure the West Indies will be sitting there, sitting down right in front of us. They are sitting down right in front of us, having a bit of stretch. They'll be thinking, you know what, we, it couldn't have gone any better for us today. I know they would like a few more runs, would like to have batted into tomorrow. But you have two chances. You know, your opening bowlers have two chances. They have a... F- crack like tonight when it's a little bit cloud cover tired bodies England have been in the field and then you have another crack first thing tomorrow morning um, especially when England are, are 38 for 3 you look at today and do you know what I'm disappointed with England today they got themselves in a great position 150 for 5 pitching the ball up challenging the inside and the outside edge brought the stumps into play then all of a sudden De Silva and, and Holder got a partnership going and they both had batted, what, 25, 30 balls each? And it was like, right, put men out, let's have a short ball fest. And again, I mean, you can do that against... I mean, to say you can do that against good players, then fair enough, you hide at one side of the wicket. But you had a team 150 for five by, you know, primarily bowling you know, good areas, making the ball move sideways. Um, and all this talk of that, the ball might have went soft. It went soft because we kept banging it in the pitch halfway down and I'm getting on my soapbox. I'm an old man. I loved, I love what England are doing. I really do. The Atkins and keep him going, not changing the team. Wood playing back-to-back games, piercing the side, keeping Wokes going because Wokes needs a games inside him and he averages 22 in, in, in test match cricket in England. Love it. I really do. I want this bowling attack challenged. I mean, the challenge would have been to keep going at 150 for five when partnership became Holder and De Silva. Probably the only two batters in the top seven other than Craig Bathwaite, who's at test match standard, even though Hodge got 100 last week. I still don't think he's test match standard. We went to the short ball and we've given ourselves... not We haven't given ourselves a mountain to climb, but I think we've given the West Indies 80 runs, 70, 80 runs, far too many. Um, because, yeah, I'm... I, I'm, I'm talking about the perfect world, but when you want to live, you want to try and change and you want to try and change your mentality. You haven't won a series in 18 months. You want to be the best team you possibly can be. The best team in the world, the best bowling attacks in the world, bowl the West Indies out today. When they have them 151 for five, they bowl them out for 200, bowl them out for 210. They don't get them anywhere near 300. And unfortunately, that's the only negative for me from today. Yes, I mean, we're three down, but we could have been, you could be three down at the end of play when the ball's brand new and it's got a little bit in, in the surface. I thought Duckett and Crawley came out all right. Um, an excellent delivery to get rid of Mark Wood and a good catch. Um, these things can happen. Just that middle period. These are the things that England have got to nail. And I'm being picky because I want this to be, I want us to set such high standards. We, we've got a new dawn. Broad's gone. Anderson's gone. This is it. This is the this is the era that's going to go and win the Ashes away, and these are little things that I think England can smart up on. Um, how did you assess how West Indies went about things with the bat? Um, look down the scorecard, and it tells you a familiar story. Runs for the batters with Test match experience: Brathwaite, De Silva, and Holder, and not a lot else from those without. No, not a lot else. I thought England bowled really well at the start. Um, and then there was a little bit of a partnership. And what I mean by the start is the first you know, two or three overs, ball was in a, a decent area. I thought Atkinson bowled um, good areas again. I think he's been a real find in this. You know, and what I mean by a find, I think we all knew he was, 
he's got something. It was, can we have the question marks need? You know, the questions need an answer. Can he back up games? Can he bowl the new ball? Can he do this? Can he do that? Well, I think, I mean, I really think Gus has proven that in these three games that there's a there's a there's a huge amount to come from Gus Atkinson. Ticking the box, very very good. I thought Wokes again was a little bit both sides bowled a little bit too short. Um, I thought it was a good partnership between Louis and uh, and Brathwaite, but that's what happens. You win the toss on a on a good wicket. They're meant to bat well. You have to put teams under pressure. England, you know, got a sniff. They got a wicket. They got another wicket. They got a great bit of luck with um, Athenaeus just before lunch. Um, the shot was on. It was just unfortunate. The timing wasn't quite right to play that big shot, and all of a sudden, ninety odd for three at lunch. England go in and you're thinking, right, we're going to bowl them out for 200. So I'm being nit- I'm, I'm nitpicking. I really am being nitpicking. But I think the reason why I'm nitpicking is because this is the standard I think I want England to go at. This is the standard I want England to ach- to ach- try and achieve. And I think, you know, 90, 90% of it is nearly there. That Just that little middle bit in, the, in when we lost our way, when we went short ball, I think that's probably cost us. 60, 70, 80 runs and I think that's why I keep nitpicking because I want us to be the best There was also another little bit of uh, fortune which went England's way Craig Brathwaite was caught via uh, the ball hitting the glove or going through to the keeper but it was shown that his glove was off the bat which as you know better than nearly anyone in the world especially at this ground Edgbaston that that is not out yeah, been, that's been mentioned to me a couple of times around the ground. And I always say, um, and Nelly said it live on Hawksby and Jacobs, that I couldn't give a flying one because I was the bowler and I wasn't bothered. Um, I'm surprised Brathwaite didn't know that. I think bowlers with a bat in their hand is a little bit of difference because of coordination, hand-eye and stuff like that. Then I can understand why Kaspervich didn't. But I thought Brathwaite might have felt as though his hand was off the bat. But it is. It was a great bit of fortune because, do you know what? Craig Brathwaite looked in good order. And in this series so far, what has he had? He's had three or four 48s, 47s and 48s. Um, again, he made 50 in this game. He looks good. He's class. He is a world-class performer. You know, he's got six, nearly 6,000 test match runs. Um, it's just a pity that his middle order isn't as as up to the standard that he is. Um the way he started, you were expecting he would go on to get a big, big score. But England were fortunate that the uh, the hand was off the bat, but you only get 15 seconds. So it might have been you know, unfortunate, but it's only unfortunate because Brathwaite didn't signal to the third umpire that he wanted to have a look at it because his, his hand was off the bat. It's out. Um, I should have asked you this before we went to air, but were you playing in that game 20 years ago when Mind the, mind the Windows, Tino? I was. Um, I, w- I was playing. I've seen Tino twice this afternoon. Um, once in the back of the press box, once close by where he's doing something for one of the sponsors here and he's he is he's facing that ball. And I've seen a couple of videos and he still hasn't getting anywhere near it. So, yeah, I was. I mean, it was hilarious because the, story, the, sto- the, the best story was the one before that where I can't remember who the batter was, but it was causing us a hell of a lot of problems. And Fred started having a go at him, and more of it, not in a joking way, but more of an aggressive way. And we managed to get under a stint. I want to say Dwayne Bravo, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I, 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 might, I might not have been Dwayne Bravo, but he really got under his, under his skin. There was a little bit of a confrontation, and then all of a sudden... Tino comes in with his chest pumping out, wanting to hit the ball from St. John's Wood down to the Oval, and... He missed one. He missed one. But the, the beauty about that was, he's. I think he went for a sweep shot, the ball before, and he's he's practiced this. I mean, he's gone for the sweep, missed it, and he's practiced this almighty hack. And Fred's const and he. The, I think the bit people miss is he. I think he just said steady on to you know, and then he went again. He practiced it again. This big shot. And that's when Andrew came out with uh, the infamous lines of "Mind the windows, Tino," which Andrew said quite a lot to a lot of people who tried to play the big shot. Um, and unfortunately, he's ran down the wicket and he's missed it. And I mean, again, like I said before, he's been out the back with the sponsors. They've got the bowling machine. Um, it's a bit like the I think there's a is there a bar in London, Sixes or something, where you have this 
you know, bowling machine spitballs at you and you face balls off different batters and face a great Shane Warne ball. I think the Shane Warne ball, Mike Gatton is, is on that. I think my slower ball was on it from Michael Clark. The mind the window is from Tino. I think a ball from Alistair, from my, Mitchell Johnson to mm-hmm. Alistair Cook's on it. You get to face, you know, you can go in for free, have a go and face these deliveries. Um, and Tino's, Tino's had 20 years to face this ball and he still hasn't hit it. So, yeah, I think there's windows safe not only in St. John's Wood but also around Edgebast and that they're still going to be uh, in one piece every time Tino Best tries to hit what delivery off Ashley. Giles. And what about uh, the uh, day two here at Edgbaston? Uh, a ground, obviously, that Ashley Giles knows very well as well. Um, how do you see that going? Look, it'll be the old cliche, the big first hour, but if Root gets in, I think he's 60-odd, 70-odd away from Brian Lara, who's here signing books. Um, I've been with the great man, Sir Kirtley Ambrose, today, who told us some indifferent stories about the allegations of Carl Hooper and, and, and Sir Vivian Richards. He talked about how what a great captain Sir Viv was and very forceful um, and making sure that you set high standards. Um, he was, you know, you know that in, its, in itself um, is a, is a storyline that's going round. But Brian Lara is, I think, 70 runs ahead of Joe Root. I think if Joe Root can get over the first half an hour tomorrow morning, hopefully, you know, England's great batter of all time will go past one of the West Indies' greatest batters of all time in Brian Lara tomorrow. And that, for me, says everything about Joe Root as a person, as a player, and as an ambassador for English cricket. And fingers crossed that if he does get 60, 70 runs to go past the great Brian Charles Lara, he goes on and gets 100 because I think... 38 for three England are probably going to need Joe Root Ollie Pope to go on and get big big scores tomorrow um, I can see England getting a, a big score because I don't think there's any demons in this pitch if you pitch it up there's something there but the bowlers in this game seem to be wanting to bowl a little bit too short OK Harmony thanks for your time uh, and thanks for joining us here on Following On live from Edgbaston shortly after uh, England reached stumps 38 for three West Indies bowled out for 282. Uh, we'll be back uh, following play on day two. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.